Hi guys, good morning. We're giving this a go too. So hopefully um, time two is the lucky time. But um, as I posted a little bit ago, after about 12 years of not taking classes, I finished my um, master's in occupational therapy about 12 years ago. And I am deciding to um, add some classes and um, yay, I think it's working this time. Um, take some classes and um, on my friend Tara. Um, she is a fellow coach in my sign gig, but also a mom and um, someone I was blessed to meet almost, we were figured out about two and a half years ago, and um, really just hit it off right away. And she has a daughter who has um, autism spectrum disorder, and my course what wants me to interview someone who lives with autism each day. Yay, Cars here. So, um, and so I thought it might. That was a mess. That's okay. <laughs> um, it would be fun to talk to someone who I don't interact with on a daily basis yet. Um, to see, get that different perspective. Um, I have many friends um, who have children that have many different special needs and many of us mamas that just have lots of kids and lots going on. But I really wanted to talk to someone who I don't interact with day to day um, and get the perspective. Um, looking through the questions that this course give, um, Car and I kind of laughed a little bit. So give us both some grace because it definitely um, is written in a very textbook type of way. And those of you that have anyone, hey Amanda, um, anyone in your life that does have um, autism spectrum disorder in any ways know that it is anything but textbook and you very unpredictable. And that's so we're actually I know my goal, and I think Cara would say too, is to bring such some light in that, that it's not something that you put in a box and black and white, and this is what you do. It actually is a very fluid, always changing, like many things in parenthood, um, something you're dealing with, and maybe bring some grace and understanding to others out there to provide support for each other as moms, because I know that's something that we both love to do is why we're coaches as well, is we like to bring grace and support and camaraderie to us mamas that are fighting the battle every day. So, um, Karth, can you hear me okay? It's good on your end? Yeah, I got you. All right. So, yeah. and thank you all for everybody that came back on, on take two. I'm just glad it didn't take three <laughs> takes because usually <laughs> that's what it is. So, um, so the first question, and I think is like an impossible question to answer, but maybe right now in your life, um, how old is your daughter and what is it like living with a child with autism? Having a child with autism. So, yeah, she is five currently and she knows everything. And she let me know that the day she turned five. Um, she, this is her. And I think it's important after I read uh, those questions that we're not talking about an automobile or right. like, read at the grocery store like we're talking about my baby that came from me who's a human and like when I read those questions I was like I don't even know how to <laughs> no one would ever talk that way like if I talked to another special needs mom we would never use the wording without empathy or like just the fluctuation so I thought it would be a good point to like show yeah. her and how she is she is not an automobile so now nice. Two minutes, what is it, like living with a, a child with autism. Um, two minutes before we jumped on here, she asked to get up and I picked her up and I saw a sneeze coming and I put her down and she screamed at me and ran in the bathroom door and shut it because I made her sneeze go away. So <laughs> that is a good everyday um, description. Like you don't know what's gonna set her off and what set her off today isn't gonna set her off tomorrow. And what, like, not two kids or people or humans with autism are similar. And even this child from day to day isn't the same human. So when you ask like one of the questions, like the tools, I thought it would be a good description for me to just like walk around <laughs> the house and collect our tools. And this isn't just for like all behaviors, like three of these could be for one behavior. And it's what works one day, 
we'll, won't work the next day, and then we got to pull something outside of our autism. Mm -hmm. Um, it's you have to enjoy the the fun autism, like the rigid, not the rigidity, but like she's very mm -hmm. little. So you have to enjoy like literal things in the spinning and the beauty. You have to find beauty in it. Otherwise, you're going to be in the fetal position in the corner during the hard Right. Process. I feel like you're sense. like the ultimate problem solver. Like, and you gotta, you gotta make yeah. that, that it's, it's fun. Like it's, that's one of the things that you were, you were giving her as her mom, because you're going to be the best problem solver for her, you know? And I think right. taking that ownership of that is what makes you such an amazing mom and why she's doing so well, you know? Um, <laughs> so the, the next part, and I think this goes to, again, all parents have this, how do you reward her? How do you motivate her? Um, those kind of things. And I think this is a, all parents struggle with this. How do you reward kids when they're being good? Um, is there anything that you would say you do that's different? Yes, because what works for one kid doesn't work for the other. And then like what works for her, she is very attention seeking it's part of her behaviors like she goes out of her way to get everyone's attention so we over praise her when she does something good and try to ignore like i won't talk to you until this happens like her follow-through like ignore the bad behavior and praise the good behavior um and when you said like reward it's she, yeah she's very like game oriented she's very ruby and competitive and like she needs to win and so like if we get all these things done on our list we can play mm -hmm. a game or if you eat the vegetables in this the meat in this the uh veggie tots this week in this if you eat every one you get a cookie for every square you eat so four cookies and she's very oriented by sweets. So and I love like how you were saying like how literal yeah. that is. There's four squares. There's four cookies. Like learning that that it's very literal and is and complying. But I have to have the cookies in front okay. of her, like literally in front of her. And then she's like, I'm not going to eat the broccoli. And I take the broccoli. I mean, I take a cookie away. Like the four cookies are there. Right. But she's like, I'm not going to. And she's putting up a fight with the broccoli or the carrots. I remove the cookie, and I'm like, you lost right. the cookie. So that cookie goes back and forth in front of her plate like 30 times through dinner. But eventually she wants the cookie. So that's how she, yeah. she gets it. And she's very um, puzzle oriented. She's always been good at puzzles and she can't not finish a puzzle. I don't know if you've ever seen um, what's that movie? The Accountant. Mm -mm. And he loses like a puzzle piece and he starts to get really upset. So like we go through times of having trouble getting dressed. So if she won't get dressed for school, she she has to, in her head, finish this puzzle. So because we started it with like a shirt, she has to put her shoes on and she has to, because it has to physically, literally be done on the puzzle for me to hand her the pants or the shoes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, could you talk a little more? Because I think this is a misconception people say when you say you're in, you ignore the bad behavior, because I know I've been in situations when I'm working with kids or in the community with other parents and, and we're ignoring a bad behavior and people assume we're letting kids get away with things or, you know, I think that's a big misconception on why, like, so kind of maybe an example of that total ignoring and, and why it works. Okay. So I am, I should say this first. Um, Hazel was born with autism. She uh, was she had words she used to cuddle she had great eye contact and then she hit 15 months old and like she was always hyper like she's always hyper but when she hit that 15 month mark um she went backwards like I couldn't touch her she touches us I don't touch her she touches us um she we do this thing called looking eyes we don't want her to directly look us in the eyes but just turn her like tunnel to us um, but she, she regressed. She has like regressive autism. So she gets too stressed out. She regresses. So when it comes to like, she's been in early intervention and she has ABA. Uh, right now, I think she's at 10 hours a week. She goes between eight and 27 hours of in-home ABA a week, depending on where she is. 
But when we go, like, ignoring the behaviors, um, she will, I'm trying to think of one. Oh, like a cup. Like, she's inflexible. So I gave her sister a pink cup, and she needs the pink cup, and her sister gets the blue cup, but God forbid I put it in the wrong cup. So we're not going to cave to that behavior because both cups are fully functional cups. So we will look away and we'll be like, once you have a calm body and once you have a calm voice, you can come talk to me about it. And we'll just completely ignore her and she'll be throwing things. I'll keep her safe. Like I'll block her if she's trying to hurt something or throw something or whatever. I'll block her, but I won't mm -hmm. look in her direction. And I'll just keep repeating the same thing. We will talk to you once you have a calm body and a calm voice. We'll, and that's like every five minutes, we'll say something like that. And then she comes over eventually because she knows I don't cave. I've done this at Walmart and people are like, this poor kid. No. And I'm like, no, she's not getting the claw machine. She's going <laughs> to behave. I don't care. And I go sit down and I, I just sit there and she knows and she eventually comes over. And then she comes over and she's like, oh, oh, I'm breathing. Oh, and I'm like, but you, like, we need to like really breathe. And then I just talk to her. Both cups are fine. This time it's Scarlett's turn to use the pink cup. Next time you can use it. Like that is how we do it. We just completely like not not look at it, not because if there's no show or there's no audience, there's no show. And she's very attention oriented. Yeah. I think that's so absolutely. And I think you said it so well. And it is um and the important thing to know if you gave cave that one time at Walmart, it starts a whole cycle where you're redoing months of work. And I think people don't necessarily understand that. Like I cannot just give in this one time because the way that they process in the brain work, it sets up yeah, <laughs> like it opens a whole door for everything. So um, the strength that it takes to do that. And like you said, knowing what motivates her, attention motivates her. So removing that changes behavior much quickly than maybe something else. Um, and then giving it to Scarlett. Scarlett, you're sitting there so calmly mm -hmm. and listening nicely. She's like, oh, yeah? <laughs> like, it's just super competitive. So she's like, I'll show you. Like, it just yeah. gets her. <laughs> and, track. I mean, that's such a normal, I, I have a six-year-old, you know, the same thing. But he'll come over and be like, I am calm. And I'm like, you're saying you're calm, but your face, <laughs> so you still need to work on it. Yeah. So um, it's all, you know, all kids are working through this. But you have, you. there's no there's no room for wiggle. Like you have to follow the plan or it's going to be days of undoing. Not every kid is like this on the spectrum. Like, cause everyone is very different, but she won't forget anything ever. So that one time six months ago that her dad gave her a piece of candy before dinner, she will bring that up relentlessly because that one time, right. you know what I mean? Something happened and she caved and she will hold mm -hmm. on to that and bring it up. Like, like taking this stuff around the house, she interrogated me. What, what are doing? you doing? Why are you taking my stuff? Where are you going for that? What are you? And I was like, I'll give it back. I promise. Just give me some time. Give it <laughs> Mommy's friend just needs my help for a few minutes. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll return it. <laughs> exactly the way it was. Um, so the next kind of questions I think go together, but how do you personally communicate with Hazel? What's kind of the best way? And then does she have certain ways she tells you when she's sick or in pain that you would say is different than other children? Yeah. Okay. So communication has changed over time. Um, she, when she lost all her words, she had, okay. So at like, she got diagnosed right before three, like a month before three. Um, but when she was 15 months, she had like 10 ish words and then lost them all. And then we taught her sign language. So we taught her like basic signs, more eat, drink. Like we taught her basic signs and she picked up on that and then she had struggled with that. Um, and then when she went into more intensive ABA, she went to like a day program for a summer. Um, and that was the 27 mark, 27 hours. Uh, she developed words, but we also did this, which is the picture exchange. Um, so we, we still use this. This is our chart to leave the house. Um, <laughs> we still use this because she's very visual. And if there's too much chaos in life, we still pull this book out. Um, or if there's too much, like we're going to a noisy place. And when we go, when, all right, this is our, this is on our fridge. Okay, this is our schedule. This is what we do. When it's on green, it moves over. So she knows every day 
All right, I fed the cat. I'm moving over. There's responsibilities in this. This isn't just like, this is self-care and responsibilities and table work, make your bed, get dressed. This is just so she knows. But when we go places, this is what I bring with me. Um, and then like when we're in the car before we even get anywhere, like we went to a Jump Nation birthday party and it says, it's like a broken clock, but I turn around before I get out of the car and I'm like, when I hand this to you, we are done in 10 minutes because we have a horrible time with transitioning. So when I hand this to you and you see this, what does it mean? And I make her repeat it back because I don't know how much attention I have. And she's like, how are you doing? But I'm like, yeah, okay. So <laughs> in 10 minutes, we are leaving once I hand you this. But when she's in the middle of playing all the kids, I could be like, mm -hmm. and she's like, I have to go to the bathroom now. But then she like, because she won't stop. You know what but, I mean? And you so found if you were just to verbally like, tell her it's time to go to the bathroom, that would not. Yeah. Go right she would completely ignore it, but she'll, she'll like, and all the kids jumping and screaming, you will see her like physically zone in on the peck and then she'll be like, okay. And it just, it just registers better. So we bring this and a lot of times it's frustrated. Hold on, <laughs> I moved that one. So I'll be like, you, what was it? There it is. First bathroom, bathroom, first bathroom then ex that's excited but first bathroom then we could do something fun that's mm -hmm. exciting but first you have to go to the bathroom and until you go to the bathroom we're not doing this fun thing so we bring that everywhere and then this is what we use in the house because she i send her upstairs or something and she comes back with like a dog <laughs> stuffed animal because she forgets by the time she gets upstairs so it would like this would be first make bed all right it has to be a preferred activity as the last one. <laughs> to get Otherwise to the end. Yeah. Yeah. So first, uh, make your bed, then get dressed, and then eat breakfast. So that's how I'll send this up to her, and then she can visually check in on it. Like, it's a checklist. I think there's Emerald in there. The checklist, so she can, like, check it off and then come down and get to do it. And she enjoys the satisfaction of, like, Right. Moving it over. You know yeah. what I mean? She enjoys that. I did this. I completed this. So how many hours have you spent on supplies and lamination and pictures? And I, I think that's like a hidden thing that people don't like hours and hours or sitting up at night. Um, another good friend of mine, Katie, who's an ABA, was an ABA therapist and consultant. Like she's like, oh my gosh, I finally thought of a behavior plan at like 2 a.m. And like she's typing it all out. Like I think that's like your brain is constantly like, okay, that birthday party didn't go great. How, what, what can I do next time? And then we'll bring the peck of the bathroom. You know, I think that's something right. that people who have maybe not been directly linked to someone who with autism don't understand the hours and hours of time laminating and problem solving and color coding and, um, Okay. Or she is thrown into this bracket of being fine. She's going to be fine. Everyone says, she, you know what I mean? Like she's just thrown in this bracket because she's con conversational, but that's her autism. There's like, it's a spectrum, right? And there's kids on this side that are not talking and don't like being touched and completely avoid like, you know what I mean? But she's on this side. Well, she will befriend everyone and go home mm -hmm. with anyone. And she has no awareness of danger if my life depended on it. And she's convinced she is Spider-Man. <laughs> so I catch her in awkward con like situations all the mm -hmm. time. And she literally justifies it as being Spider-Man. So all of our windows have alarms. All of our doors have alarms. There's a baby gate and that weight doorknob. So I can hear her leave her room in the middle of the night. This is brought, this is like, because places are loud. This stuff is in my purse. All the time. Because I don't know when I need to be like, it's okay. Here, like, mm -hmm. squeeze, get your frustration out. Um, She, this is on her neck all the time. This is, it's a body stuff. So, like, how many hours? I have complete guilt because I worry about her all the time. And I don't worry about the other one because the other one is assertive and ballsy. And, like, she'll let you know. But this one... I worry about all the time because she's thrown in the fine bracket, but it took us two 
entire years of ABA to reach and recognize the number 12. Mm -hmm. Two years. And they told us in kindergarten they want her to know algebra, do algebra, <laughs> and read, and do math, and add and subtract. And I'm like, we just got to 12, like last week. And you want her to put them together and do mm -hmm. stuff? Like, she knows her name because that's oriented to her. But you want her to... So I worry all the time because she aggresses and goes backwards. I worry because uh, the school doesn't take her autism serious because she's friendly and bubbly and oriented. And I'm like, but she's going to run out the door like she's done before. And I'm constantly thinking of like, where is it? Like her medical bracelet. It says, don't... Let me hide my information. Okay. Yeah. It says, I have autism. And then it says, don't touch, no sugar, runner. Because I don't know how else to make it a big red flag that this kid isn't right. Fine. She's not fine. She's not going to be fine. This is who she is. It's the best part of her. She's absolutely freaking amazing. She has amazing qualities. But when it comes to retaining information that's like book related, not like what did mom let me get away with <laughs> right. related, or like it's just, I just, I worry all the time because I can't trust her instincts enough to kick in. So all the time, I am constantly worried about her and complete mom guilt because I don't worry about the other one because the other one's going to protect her somehow. I can yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're probably, there's a reason, you know, I believe that there's a reason that they're together, but um, like you're saying, like, so communication is a great strength of hers in some ways, like she can make friends and things yeah. like that, but then everyone no she can't make friends. Teacher. <laughs> she gets made she gets made uh, fun of all the time already yeah. um because she's rigid and she doesn't understand or pick up on any physical cues other people are putting off so she doesn't realize she's getting made fun of and she doesn't realize that other kids play with flexibility and imagination mm -hmm. and once you teach her something it is like that's how it's done every single time and that kid's playing it wrong right. and I'm it's just so no she doesn't really make friends that she just talks yeah and expresses and she's cute so therefore she's like she's fine and I think I mean how much like as a professional like too like we always need to be slowing down and like really looking at what's happening for that child you know like like you said sometimes the kids that are throwing things across the room and fits and, you know, maybe can't take care of themselves at all get more attention than like you're saying, Hazel, who can come in and look really cute and happy. And, you know, so there's always that stop and what is really happening for this child and what is really going on in their environment. Um, it never, there's never the same kid twice, you know, and that's why I love my job. But as you're saying, like it can be, so exhausting at the same time um on that note i'm gonna skip ahead a little bit but um hazel's in kindergarten or she's going to kindergarten going going we did three years so of she's been so how would you say like what's been your experience with the education system for her <laughs> honestly i feel like for I feel like for being in preschool, I have ended up in the principal's office more times than I can already count. And I, the principal's in every IEP meeting. Like, I feel like if you can't handle this fine kid now, how do you feel like it's going to be for the next 12 years of schooling? Because we are in preschool and I've had, I think five IEP meetings this year alone. And I think that's important um, to realize that, like, the school has to learn, but they also have to put stop putting everyone in one category. Mm -hmm. Like, they, they want her with her peers, so it's good peer role modeling. But developmentally, we did an evaluation, and she's developmentally three. She's not five. She's develop so why are you expecting – shouldn't you be leaning towards where she is at and where you can start pushing her and not expecting her to be where everyone else is? Is our yeah. Path. Is she in a community or is it a program that the school does, like the um, district? She's in a regular class. So because like here in Ohio, there's, you know, private preschool that some, a lot of kids go to. And then sometimes I go out and service in the private preschool 
you know, like a Christian school or church does it on. And then also the school district offers, you know, preschool that's a half, you know, half special ed, half um, typically developing kids. And it's always interesting that like, I, I don't know, like where it ends up and lots of kids. I'm like, no, they should be in our program to get more services. And often they're pushed, no, stay in your community preschool. And they're not necessarily, you know, equipped to really, like you're saying, they, they're like, no, they should just catch up. We should just do it, like to meet kids where they're at. Um, and I know that's a hard, where early intervention is so like specific to a child and then preschool is like, nope, just kind of group them in. It, it seems to be my experience. I don't, would you agree with that? Yeah, she's yeah. grouped in. She's, she's just grouped in. She is thrown in, but I think, hold on baby. <laughs> I think in the, um, in the next year, they're going to realize I'm not like this crazy lunatic that she, um, has amazing qualities, but also has her major faults, I guess. I don't know what the word is. Like, they're going to realize when they actually ask her to do stuff with the numbers and letters and not three years of preschool because she has, like, the triangles and the shapes mm -hmm. down, that once they realize she has to do something with it and she's going to get frustrated and then they're going to see behaviors, they're going to be like, oh, this mom's not crazy. And then they're going to, yeah. Do you know how many, I've heard that so many times from parents that are like, I've been saying this for three years. And that always like breaks my heart because you're their mom, you know, you, you know, even with my own child, um, who has is gifts got testing is now gifted and all these things that I saw for three years of school. And I was like, his anxiety and this and this, and they're like, he's fine at school. He's totally fine. And I was like, but you don't see the tears in the car. You don't see the meltdown. You don't see the like tearing up my homework. Cause I did one thing wrong. And it is, it's so many times it takes them getting to a breaking point at school before they step in like, oh, maybe. And I don't know what the solution to that is besides like hidden cameras in our house and taking the video in <laughs> to show them. But I did, I do send them videos now, but I think um, like I have dyslexia. I took me to embrace her autism. And then last year's with Sean Harper to embrace my dyslexia. But I think it's important like I learn differently. I know that I need to be in a quiet room if I'm gonna read something or write something, otherwise I'm gonna type or text or write down what I'm hearing. So if I learn differently and I need 30 seconds to respond, why can't we expect and give her 60 seconds to respond and give her the accommodations that she needs to learn and develop the proper way? I have to teach her because the school's not doing it. I have to teach her. Okay, you're getting overstimulated. What do you need? You need space. So how can you ask for space? What can you do to help you in the situation? Because no one's going to help you in the situation. I have to teach her the tools to self-evaluate herself so she can help herself in those situations because no one else is going to help her in those situations mm -hmm. besides me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm really fidgety, so I need a squishy, or I need to chew on this, or if I need space, that big circle thing is a tent. She goes, hides, and retreats in. Yeah. If she's overstimulated or her sister keeps sitting on her because she's her sister. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like I have to teach her these tools. Right. And I don't I wish the school would take that into consideration that not everybody is an MCAS kind of we're not in right. a box. We're not in a box. So stop trying to teach us in the box and it hasn't worked for the past four decades. So can we just move on and give individual educational plans what IEPs are supposed to be for, but it's really a right. thing. Yeah. Sorry. No, and it and so, and as um someone in the trenches, you know, know that there's people on the other side of, that are fighting it just as hard, you know, as you. Um all right, so the the elephant question, I feel like that the last one on here. Um what personally, what do you believe is the cause of autism? Do you have a thought? I think she I know she's born with it because she put me in the hospital twice for being in, for having an overactor, overactive uterus. Okay. Like she was always hyper. Even before um, delivery, I think it's like preterm labor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I don't think some shot gave it to her 15 months. Like she was, she came out advanced. Like she was crawling at three months. She was walking at 10 months. She's always been, like, she's very advanced. I think um, it's a compound effect. 
of us not approving stuff that's on the market and what we're putting in our lawns and what we're putting in the air. And I think there is a, there has to be some, some consequence to how we treat our environment. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Like the air, the lawn, the chemicals we clean with, the food, the processed food, all of the stuff we clean our dishes with, there has to be some kind of consequence to just buying cheap stuff and spraying it around our lungs and then giving birth. Like there has to be, that's my theory. I could be wrong. I don't, I just don't think it's a shot. I don't think they just develop it. I mean, I think that it just, they're born with it. She was born special. She was born Spider-Man. It's just who she is. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, there's just so, our world is not healthy and safe at this point, you know, I, I don't think in general. And um, I know that's part, again, like our mission, how we kind of got connected was helping moms and other women be more healthy and safe and how we can deal with life and, you know, whatever's thrown at us. So I, I know that we brought us together. Um, so as we wrap it up, um, can we meet Hazel? And she, you wanna meet I want to, yes. And she can come get all of her goodies. <laughs> I know. Why are you taking this? <laughs> Hazelnut. Hazelnut. Can you come here, please? I did say that. Come on. Okay, we're not going to touch the computer. Right? <laughs> we're going to go. Ready? Can I pick you up? Are you going to say hi to Mama's friends? Look at all your stuff. We have a Hi. Thanks for letting us see your, your cool stuff. They like all your toys back here. Who do you got there? My pet. Yeah? Is it a bird? No. It's it? a kitty cat. And it's haunted. And hi. It's some man. No. Oh, it can. It's haunted. Oh, that's so cool. That's some Jamma head. That's his Jamma head? Yeah, and these are some damas. That is so cool. So that's a tag. We so we embrace it. We talk about it openly. Um, I think it's important. Like she knows. What do you have that makes you special? Actisha. Okay. I think it's important that she knows how to self evaluate mm -hmm. herself, and that's one of those things. Like it's not an excuse. It is not <laughs> at all an excuse. So if the sun is bothering you, because you're because okay, you're sensitive to light, um then put a hat on or put sunglasses on. You know what I mean? You're not getting out of the activity. She's yeah. her stuff. You're not getting out of the activity. You know what I mean? Like there's ways to deal with it, but it's not an excuse for her. Mm -hmm. This could this could be very different for other parents. And I know a lot of uh, parents that um, get, go a lot of work to get an evaluation, but don't do anything mm -hmm. with it. Um, and I think, like, she, it's an excuse. It's not an excuse. It's never going to be an excuse. It's just we got to work with it and use our tools over here to find a way to to cope yeah. with it. You know what I mean? And to grow with it. It's my job as her parent to push her out of her comfort zone, push her out of her comfort zone, so that way she can become the best version of herself and self-evaluate the best version of herself. Absolutely. And that, that's like one of the biggest things that um, has kept me up at night or in tears is I have students that, you know, the parents fight so hard to not have an autism diagnosis. And I'm like, I don't, I don't understand because if your child had diabetes or had, you know, something you would, we would get them, we'd get them help and we would fight it. And you, this is, it's the same thing there. So some way, and I know moms like you, are fighting it, that shame. I don't know who decided it was just something that we don't talk about and they're like, but that's a load of baloney in my mind. Like it is a diagnosis. There was a grieving, there was a grieving period I did mm -hmm. go through and I still go through occasionally and it hits me the most random it's spots. Okay, okay, so hold on, hold on. Um, because you had these hopes and dreams when you're pregnant and you don't know if they're gonna come true. Um, but there, there's a grieving thing. There is a grieving place, but it, I am not, she's not going to be my excuse to be miserable. 
and I lost myself in the label mm-hmm. when it first Hi-tay. happened. I, okay. I lost myself Hi-tay. in the label when it first happened, but it is not a, a she's not trick. the problem in our family. She is the glue that keeps us together. And because we have to fight for her. Yes, you potty train. <laughs> she potty train. She, she started wearing underwear about three Good months Good job, ago. big girl. <laughs> Um, so you can see the difference in, like, anxiety in her. <laughs> all right, all right, come on, come on, hey, 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 come on, come on. Um, okay, okay, what are you going to say? Say hi, Christy. Hi, Christy. Hi, sweetheart. Bye. Okay. Oh, but can you go see Daddy now? <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it's not a, it's not an excuse. Don't let it be an excuse for them to disable them. And don't let it be an excuse for you as a parent to throw in the towel at life. I think that's my biggest struggle is I got lost in the diagnosis and I just, I just lost. I was in that like downward tunnel of Google and how can I fix this? How can I change this? But but then I stopped taking care of myself. Don't let that be your excuse. Like you can totally take care of yourself. She loves working out. She asks me all the time to work out. It is an energy filling thing for her and she needs to get it out of her system. Just don't, I, it, none of this is an excuse for life. So if you had, sense. you know, if that mom that you're saying is in that grieving period or even like, I, I'm fearful this is gonna be, you know, our truth or like, how did you take that first step like out? Like, what would you tell them right now? I find the joy in lining things up and in spinning and catching them on top of things in weird situations and their their little, their, their growth, like her potty training at five. Like, find the joy and embrace the baby steps as you go along because four years ago someone was smearing okay um and that was hard and in like a dark tunnel but once that stopped we had to embrace it once you know what i mean you have to enjoy the growth as it's like as it's happening and then find the joy like i don't need to buy toys if she doesn't need toys that's a bucket of beans okay like you know what i mean find the joy in this stuff in the fact she is spider-man otherwise you're going to lose yourself in the adjustment of a sock or the fact you took out the mac and cheese out of the microwave and got your like you have to find the joy in the little things otherwise the hard stuff you're not going to be able to handle and find a tribe like a community online if you google like autism support groups or whatever that is endless they're not always nice but that is endless or just find a tribe of people that can comfort you like you you know what i mean like us find something that you can turn to and hold on to in the darker and harder mm-hmm. times because it does get hard and we go through tough patches and she does regress and if you don't find the joy in the little stuff you're gonna lose your mind and like and i hear you saying like just own your life like this is just own it. it's not anyone else's <laughs> life it's not you know like this is my life and i'm gonna own the joys and i'm gonna ride through the the roller coaster and this is our life. And I think there's so much peace in that, you know, like so much peace in that. So, um, I know, but I am stronger. You know what I mean? Our whole family is stronger because of, mm-hmm. her, because we had her and we had to develop this backbone that I didn't even know existed in me. And I think that's another thing people have to do. Like you have to do what's best for them and for you and don't worry about everyone else. They're going to stare. They're going to stare and they're going to look at your kid like it's a freaking science project and it's going to make you want to lose your mind, but embrace it. Be like, yes, she is different and she is fun and she is wild, but she has more integrity than the person that is Mm -hmm. staring. Yeah. Well, I I hope we touched some lives today and thank you for sharing so openly. I know. Well, we'll give her her mom back. I know she, we're probably messing up her, our schedule a little bit. So um, um, thank you again. And I'm going to save this and have it if anyone wants to share it. Um, we would love to do that. And um, we, and we're both working out live here in an hour. So if you want to join us, <laughs> yes, we will be. Um, you can work out with either one of us. So if anybody's watching and wants info for that, let us know. So I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye, Hazel. You want to say bye?
How do you know my name? Because <laughs> we're talking about you. <laughs> All right, I'll talk All to right. you later. Thank, Thank you. you.